in this case, probably there was a metal metal contact on where on the uh, debris uh, of uh, debris of, uh, of metal uh, causing bisocialysis. And uh, recently, with the M6, uh, also when the, the, the also with the when the with the contact between the two end places too is too close. We can ha have this kind of metal-metal uh, metal, uh, contact and this uh, solace. So, of course, if, we, if the prosthesis is, going, is, is not very well implanted, or there is a, some of kyphosis and uh, there is a, a contact on the front of the prosthesis, we can uh, face these kind of uh, issues. And uh, sometimes we, we have to revise these patients uh, for, uh, because the risk is uh, osteolysis and the, and the reaction uh, on the on the soft tissue or around the vessels, and that's a, it's a big risk for the patient sometimes. Okay, fantastic. Um, I, I know you looked at one of the patients from our group. He had a cervical osteolysis kind of going on right now, and you kind of gave him some recommendations. And I thought that was a, I thought that was a perfect response to to see what is going to happen here and form down the road. Um, what are your contraindications for artificial disc replacement? When the, 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 the disc is, the initial disc is not moving at all in, uh, in dynamic films and you have a high collapse of the, the disc, I think there is no, that makes sense that to, to, to replace and to make a, 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 a artificial, artificial disc in these uh, patients. Because most of the time, as you know, we replace only the disc, we don't replace the facets. So most of the time, the facets are very, on, on, on very stiff and uh, we, we cannot uh, succeed in, 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 in searching the prosthesis. So sometimes we have to distract too much and that causes also uh, pain and uh, uh, coming from the facet. So if the, 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 the collapse of the disc is too, too high, I, uh, there is no, no indication for me for prosthesis. And the other, the other contraindication is the, the facet, the facet uh, degeneration. But uh, as I said to you before, we are pushing very far the indications of, um, of uh, ESP, including with patients with uh, 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 facet degeneration. And we, for the moment, we have good results. But of course, if we, if we have, we have not, it's forbidden to implant a mechanical prosthesis with a patient with a high facet degeneration because we will get a very bad result very quickly. But the ESP is very tolerant with the problem of facets, so we can, uh, we can push uh, the indications uh, uh, more, more, uh, more, more far away. What is uh, what is, as far as your your history with the LP ESP going as far back to say two thousand four or five? Do you do you have some patients out there that you know still continually doing well? Because probably I think the patient we have probably the longest in the group is probably about four or five years maybe. But do you have do you have patients you know offhand that had them and, and still doing you know well? Yeah, of course, yeah. Now, uh, the patient from the beginning, the very beginning of the study, two, 2004, 2005, 2006, it was two years of the initial study. At, at that time, we didn't have a uh, lordotic uh, process. So it was parallel process. So it's very, very high, very, uh, very difficult to implant this process in the FRS1. But anyway, we, we do it in it was the study, and, and uh, uh, I am still uh, following these patients. And most of them, I have to say that most of them, after 10 years, they have a spontaneous fusion because of the, 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 the process is, is, is uh, completely stuck in, in, in the bone, in the vertebral body, in the, in the L5 uh, uh, body. And then there is a posterior fusion uh, behind the prosthesis. But in the, in the second series with robotic undergoes, now we have patients with more than 10 years of follow-up and uh, they are doing well and they are still mo uh, moving, they are still, still uh, having a good result. Uh, sometimes we can, we can have, anyway, we can, we can have some uh, problems on the, on the 
level above the prosthesis, but uh, that's not really an adjacent level uh, disease. It's, it's an ongoing degeneration of patients where they have multi-level degeneration, and uh, most of the time, especially in, in Europe, we are, we are allowed to replace one, one level, and uh, it's more difficult to replace two levels or three levels because of the problems of reimbursement for the patient. So uh, we have problems of uh, adjacent levels that are not true adjacent level disease. There are problems of ongoing generation in patients that who should have a, a, at the beginning two or, two or three levels. That makes complete sense. And, and we see that here with a lot of patients as well, that, you know, they get a hybrid or, or, or you know, and then over time, say 10, 15 years, that next, next just, just because of degeneration or morbidity issues or whatever it may be that they're doing to the body or they're still very active, um, you know, that those discs, of course, over time will, will not hold up. But, you know, if they went through a fusion and, and you know, maybe five years down the road, they would be replacing that, that disc much, much quicker. Yeah. So, so that, that makes complete sense. You know, we had a patient from Australia that just joined and um, she had a two level Charité and for 14 years and they finally, both of them just, you know, they had that little spring mechanism breakout and, and she's not in that much pain, but she's obviously very concerned and, I tried to get her to say, hey, why don't you go see MSY? And, you know, Australia's a big country. She's on one side and he's on the other. You know, he's on the Gulf Coast, but I'm, I'm hoping she'll, she'll make it over there to him. Um, what do you do for, uh, for post-op pain for your patients? So say I come in and you do a two-level or you do a hybrid of, of some sort. What do you, what's your post-op pain program? Was to pain you or you mean about uh, 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 painkillers or or pain uh, correct yeah do you do uh, Tylenol for a couple of days or do you do uh, yes uh, or most of the time the patients are in the hospital two or three days after surgery uh, and uh, we use uh, morphine if it's necessary but most of the time it's not really necessary for disc. Uh, for disc replacement, and uh, it's usual uh, painkillers, uh, tramadol or uh, paracetamol, and anti uh, non steroid uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. But uh, we we face sometimes with problems with acute pain. Uh, it's very rare when we over distract the the. the, the the disc and in these cases we use a facet uh, facet joint injections uh, at the, the beginning. It's very very rare uh, probability to do that. Um, I, I I I use a brace most of the time also to re reduce the pain at, at most at the beginning to just to stabilize the, the prosthesis to avoid this problem of psoriasis like I tell you before. Uh, and to have a very good uh, primary uh, uh, anchorage of the prosthesis uh, at the beginning. Because as uh, you see in the ESP, there is only spikes that are, they, uh, they are assuring the, the, the primary uh, stability. There is no, uh, no stem, no, no kill, uh, or no other device to stabilize the prosthesis. And uh, and we, we start uh, very quickly also the muscle strengthening. Uh, uh, it's, uh, at the beginning, it's only static strengthening. And uh, one month after surgery, we start the dynamic strengthening. It's sort of, I don't know the name in English. The, in France, they, they say the gainage. Gainage, you know that? that there is a strengthening of the lateral muscles of the. Kinesiology, you mean? No, it's it's a, it's a very deep strengthening of the, of the muscles of the of the posterior chain wall on the lateral wall of the of the, oh. of the belly, and we we strength also the posterior muscles and we we strength also the psoas muscles. Okay, how many um to you know obviously with the ESP and getting more and more um 
less conservative, I guess, is probably the best way to put. How many how many ADRs have you done in the cervical stacking wise? Have you done two, three levels? And same thing with in the lumbar. Now I know in France, I was told there's a law that you're not allowed to do uh, multiple. Uh, in the, you'd have to do fusion ADR or fusion. I don't know how that would all work. If you need a three level, or maybe you would do two level fuse and then put an ADR at the top. But does Luxembourg fall under those same rules, or are you? No, able to not, in, in Luxembourg, we are allowed to to to, to insert multiple multi level prosthesis. But uh, I I didn't make more than three levels. It's very rare, uh, especially in uh, in uh, cervical uh, in sure. cervical area. In lumbar area, I think one time I made uh, two three levels. But it's a very special case. Uh, uh, but uh, most of the time we are doing uh, hybrid constructs. So we prefer to, to make a fusion on L5-S1 and uh, uh, prosthesis on L5, uh, L4-L5 and L3-L4. Uh, you, you asked me before why L5-S1. L5 we have many studies on that, that they are show that the result is quite the same in, in when we, 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 try, we treat two levels. If you make a fusion on L5S1 or, or a prosthesis, uh, we are not very concerned in Europe about the sacroiliac joint of, uh, pain, and uh, there is a, the, we we know the, the, the techniques of fusion of uh, SI, and uh, but we are very we have not the same approach of this problem like in uh, in US, and there are, there are many surgeries around. Uh, Sacroiliac joint uh, disease. A uh, few times, one time a year, maybe I fused some sacroiliac joints. So it's very, very rare cases, and uh, most of the time they are not linked with the problem of fusion on the face one. It's problems uh, or uh, primary problems of uh, sacroiliac, sacroiliac joint. You know, our, our patients as a whole, post op, do have a lot of SI joint problems. and, and and some are fused, some are some have a hybrid, and some have you know um, some have an M6 at that at that level. Some have two SPs at, or at that at those two levels. We're really trying to hard to figure it out. And and you know one of my moderators who helps me really with a lot of the 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 filing and whatnot. You know she has some SI joint problems, and 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 you know she's a very thin, you know astute woman. She's uh, you know. Before her, before her surgery, she was really in good shape. She ran, you know, 10, 10 miles or five kilometers a day. I mean, she was really, really good. And she's still, she's about eight months out and she's still having some issues. And, and we're trying to really figure out as a group why it, it, it's so uh, prevalent over here. But you're telling me maybe with... Oh, uh, I think the problem is the, the initial uh, diagnosis of the, the of the pain. It says, what is the pain generator at the beginning? And in these cases, uh, most of the time, the, the, the problem is coming from the, the SI. And, uh, and these patients have, could have a degeneration on, on the disc also. But uh, they are operated on the, on the disc, and maybe the problem is coming really from the SI. So, when you fuse, obviously, if you have a uh, degeneration of the SI and you fuse L5-S1 or L4-L5, you, 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 you worsen the, the, the case of the patient. So uh, I think that the, we have to, to, to consider the, the thinking of this pathology in this way, that the problem, initial problem is probably the SI. And uh, maybe we have to address primary this problem before uh, taking care of the this disease. But I, I agree with you, it's very, very difficult to assess the, this problem. And even with injection, we have with many, uh, we have many tests, many. But uh, I, I, like you, sometimes we, we, we can see some bad problems uh, with patients with uh, two level fusions or two prosthesis and uh, they are still painful. And we are thinking about the SI and uh, and uh, we, we, we go, finally, we operate these, these patients on the SI, and not always we solve the problem. But the, the, there is a, probably the, the, it's more difficult to, 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 uh, 
to understand the, 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 the pain of this patient. I think there is problem, also a problem of uh, sagittal balance disease. So we, we have to consider all the, the, the patient and uh, to, to find out what, what really the, the, the pain, what is really the pain generator. It, it may be in these patients. We don't have to operate these patients uh, at the beginning. Maybe we have to just make a strengthening uh, uh, fitness uh, physiotherapy uh, to, to solve the problem. So uh, in, uh, in women, we have sometimes these problems after uh, after birth with, with, with this pain, this uh, SI pathology, and uh, it's uh, it's very difficult to 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 assess the, 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 the this uh, pain scheme. It's very difficult. When you uh you do your uh, obviously you do your access, and we've got some patients as well. And you know we're obviously trying to find answers for them, and and, and leave you guys alone to, to do the surgery and whatnot. But we've got patients that have hernia issues or or abdominal swelling that never seems to to go away. What what do you think should be some related causes of that or, or muscle numbness that never seems to go away either? Do you think it was just Yes, that's uh, that's a problem. Uh, yes, of course, uh, I have these also these issues like other surgeons. So we have a few uh, amounts of patients, especially when we make a, a larger approach on uh, two or three levels on the side on the abdominal wall. We we have a, we could have a paresis uh, of the abdom abdominal wall that could be swelling, and it's it's a palsy. It's a palsy of the ab abdominal wall, and because we we, we stretch too much the little nerves. Uh, they are innervating this area. There's a genital crural, genital, uh, there are many, many, many nerves in this abdominal wall, and uh, we could uh, damage these this, this nerves. And uh, they have this kind of asymmetry of the abdominal wall after surgery. Sometimes we, 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 we think that it's maybe a, a real uh, Herniation, of, uh, but uh, when we refer this patient to the to the abdominal surgeon, they say no. The, the, the abdominal wall is continual. There is no there is no hernia, but there is a swelling, and uh, that's very very difficult to treat. Uh, so we don't have a really really uh, uh, a solution to, for this patient. Uh, that's painful. That's this problem of cosmetics or cosmetic also is not very very. So it, it's a problem. It's very 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 few amount of patients, but uh, there there is a that's a problem. We have less this problem when we make a midline approach. It's more on the lateral approach. Uh, but uh, anyway, we have this this kind of problem. Okay. So you've uh, obviously, and, and Chris, Chris gave me permission to talk about him a little bit. Um, I, I, don't, we're, I don't really want to, but I just want to say, you've done some revision surgeries, you've done a revision, and Chris is very vocal in our group, um, and, and you know, letting him know his history, because he's got obviously quite a history there. But uh, how many revisions have you done with, uh, with dysprothesis? Prosthesis? And maybe what, what are some of the discs that you had to remove? Have you fused all of them? Have you put an ESP back in them? What has been, maybe you can think of some cases? Yes. Well, the revision, you, you mean the revision from the front, because sometimes right. we can uh, solve the problem if the, the, we have only a problem of subsidence of the prosthesis with very low motion of, in, the, in the implant. We can just fuel the patient from the back and that uh, the, the better solution is uh, less risky for the patient, and, and uh, the, that works quite well. But if there is a high instability, if there is a, uh, maybe the, the, the prosthesis can uh, can be a mal, uh, uh, bad position with uh, can have a bad position with. Uh, a risk of damage or a vessel, something like that. So we have to, to remove the prosthesis from the front. There's always a challenge to, to remove uh, this prosthesis. Not so much in L5S1, more in L4, L5, L3, L4. 
But uh, anyway, uh, when the patients have been operated many times from the front, it's uh, really difficult because there is a lot of scar tissue. We have the vessels, we have the nerves. And uh, so hopefully we don't have to do that uh, many times. Uh, so I think I had to, to, re to remove the uh, prosthesis about 50, 50 times, something like that, 50 or 60 times. And most of the time, uh, uh, it's quite easy because uh, the, the, the main cause is uh, the malpositioning of the prosthesis. So when it, it, that's been, that is an early uh, uh, revision. And when we uh, change the prosthesis a few weeks after the implantation or one month of the implantation, it's quite easy to remove and to change the, the position of the prosthesis. And sometimes we can remove the prosthesis, make a fusion, or sometimes we can replace. And uh, most of the time, when I have bad position of, of uh, bad positioning of position of uh, a mobile prosthesis like uh, Bagera, I, I implant an, an ESP with no problems. Uh, but that's early revision. If you make a late revision, that's more more challenging, more difficult. And uh, in this case, when we remove the prosthesis, we have a big gap, and it's very difficult to fill the gap, the gap with another prosthesis because we don't have so so high prosthesis to we, have, we don't have revision prosthesis so it's, uh, for 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 the for the lumbar area. So even if we use the, the higher one is 17 or 20 cent, uh, millimeters, sometimes it's not enough to fill the gap. So we, we have to make a fusion. And uh, the problem uh, when we, we go on the front more and more uh, is to, to stretch or, or to uh, retract too much the, the, fin, the, the, the little nerves on the front of the, of the, of the, of the disc that uh, is the hypogastric uh, nerves and that can cause uh, problems of uh, retrograde e ejaculation in the men or dryness of the vagina for, for the woman. That, that's, uh, most of the time this problem is, uh, is going to, to solve by itself in a few months, uh, hopefully, but uh, we, we have less than 1% of this kind of, uh, of, uh, of problems especially in revisions. So if you have to revise a, a disc, one that has a, you know, and every, every disc is kind of a little bit different out there, but some have large keels, some have no keels. My opinion is, and I, I don't know this at all, that's why I'm kind of wondering, is it, is it harder to remove a disc with the larger keels than having... No, I have I had uh, revised many previous processes and uh, it's not so, so difficult to remove it with no. the keels. No, uh, most of the time we, we can, uh, once you have re, uh, uh, removed the, 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 the implant, the, the inlay, when you remove the inlay, you have a big a gap between the end to end place and with a very small scissor, so you, you can detach the, the prosthesis from the, from, the, from the bone with no too, too, too much uh, bone loss. Uh, it's like uh, in a, in a hip prosthesis, most of the time in, in this uh, non-cemented prosthesis, we have just one area with a very, very fixed uh, uh, stabilization. But all, all the, there is no the same fixation of all around the, 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 the implant. So you, you, can, you can really detach, or I, I would say, uh, 70% of the, of the surface very easily and just one or 30% of the surface, there is a very thick uh, adhesion. I, that's, in this case, maybe you have to remove more bone to, to detach the process. But uh, hopefully we don't make so much uh, disasters in this, in this when we remove these kinds of process. The, the more challenging, of course, is the vessels and the, the adhesions of the vessels, if you, especially the vein, the number of vein. And, uh, and the iliac vein and the vena cava, and you, when you have uh, big additions of these vessels, uh, that's very difficult. So sometimes we have to to go back and not to not to to, to go further because we have a big risk of uh, bleeding. Sometimes, if we have to remove it because the process is very compressing the vessels, uh, you have to have the 
in this case, the help of a vascular surgeon and to, to make a, a prosthesis of the, of the vessel itself. So to cut the, 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 to cut the aorta and to make a, to make a, to make a, to make a prosthesis between the, between the two, the two uh, ends of the, of the aorta to, to, to make a, another aorta with the, or, or a vein with a, with a graft. This is very, very. Uh, I have one one time I, we had to do that in way when patient because the process was completely, completely compressing the the, the vein and the, the vena cava and the aorta. So that was very, hopefully, very rare cases. Now I saw with Chris's procedure. He showed me his surgical nose. You used an adhesive barrier. Do you typically use an adhesive barrier, or was it because? This was his third time, and he thought maybe that would help. I, it looked like that's what you used. It was a different name, but I kind of looked it up. Do you know what I mean by that? Uh, he's a very, you, you, you need uh, uh, anti adhesion. Anti -adhesion. Correct, Correct. anti adhesion. Yes, yes we, we, we use some products like that, but uh, we don't know if, if they are very efficient. But we, uh, uh, between the vessels and the processes, always we, we, we insert some, something uh, so it's. Uh, it's gel coat, uh, many many different uh, products uh, to to avoid the, the, the adhesion. Sometimes we use thrombin, with the flow seal is very when we are when we have a little breathing, we use this kind of, uh, of product also. But uh, we don't know it's really efficient to to avoid the adhesion. So uh, most of the time, if you have a good uh, a big inflammation of the tissues around the prosthesis because you have a wear because you have in infection or something like that, you, you will have uh, adhesions so, uh, with a uh, product or with, with uh, or without product, uh, it's the same. Uh, sometimes in the primary, even in the primary uh, uh, disc processes, you could have uh, adhesions of the vein because of the disc is very inflammatory and, uh, and, uh, and sometimes we have, uh, we don't, we, we cannot detach the vein from, from the disc, it's very, very difficult. Sometimes. Uh, good stuff. Um, how long, say an international patient goes home, um, you know, say they go back to Netherlands or, or somewhere, how would you treat them if, if they're having some post-op complications? I mean, I know that's the hardest part, right? Yeah, uh, yes, that's complicated. That's very complicated. I know it's complicated. Uh, of course, uh, the, the better way is not to have uh, issues and not to have complications, but uh, sure. most of the time uh, they are follow, followed by, by uh, a surgeon in, uh, in a country and uh, we can exchange with, uh, with, with these surgeons if there is some uh, issues, but in, in some cases, uh, if we have to solve the problem, it's a, very, it's a surgical problem, so the, the only way is to, 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 to come back in, in Europe. Uh, Fortunately, for, for in, my, in my experience for the moment, I didn't have to do that. But uh, I understand that uh, as that's a problem, that's an issue for, for the for the problems or for the patients overseas. So uh, I have not really uh, a good uh, good uh, solution again answer to this problem. Okay. Um, I don't really have a whole lot more. I, I guess I wanted to talk to you. I I visited your your clinic and not many people probably know that and and the one thing that I tell everybody was how much we enjoyed Luxembourg um, how old is the hospital uh, that you do your procedure at oh sorry I did so how old is your hospital that you do your procedure at where you where you do surgery at where I do, I do the surgery no how old is that what is the name of the how hospital? old oh, it's uh, old uh, it's uh... Uh, it was built in uh, in eighty five. No, no, in, in ninety five. Oh, okay. It looks very new. I mean, yes. it looks very. It looks very new. It's very. It's very nice. The one thing that I'll say is, for an international patient that that decides on you, I, I think that you have one of the best places to recover in, um, because of the cute little town center that it's around and. And everything's kind of walkable. There's a lot of things to do that you can walk, you know, because obviously the, the, the number one thing we tell patients after surgery is you need to walk, 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 right? Mm -hmm. I, 
And I think there's a multitude of things that you can do. There was the mall across this on the other side and the cute little town square with all little stores. It was just, it was very pleasant and very westernized to, to us, which we like, but maybe to you, it may not be as, as, as romantic. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's one thing I tell everybody is, is it'll be very easy as, as far as any place to recover once they get me. Yes. Sorry, Jimmy, I, I make a mistake. It was, uh, no, uh, the, the hospital was built 10 years ago. It wasn't two, two, 2005, so it was 10 years ago, yes. Yeah, I'd say it, it looks relatively new. I mean, uh, I thought it was probably about five years old, so. No, it's, it's 10 years old. But it was, you know, like I said, it's, the, it's built really, really nice. The area was beautiful. The, the people were fantastic, and, and, and we really enjoyed it. We stayed there for you know, about a half a day and had some food. And, and like I said, we, we really enjoyed it. So if someone's, you know, looking for a nice, probably look, it's probably very easy to get a flat or an apartment there to rent for a few weeks to stay. And, and um, I think it'll be very enjoyable for, for anybody. Um, and Chris, you know, Chris shared some pictures of, of everything as well. But what is the name of your hospital again? I, for, I forget what it's called. It's Kirchberg, Kirchberg Hospital. It's a, it's a group of hospitals now. So right. we have, two hospitals. So I made my consultation in uh, the hospital that you, you saw. The Kirchberg Hospital is a new one and I used to operate in this uh, op uh, in this hospital mainly emergencies and I, I uh, operate also in the second operating where Chris was operated. It's in the, in the it's downtown. It's a oldest uh, hospital but uh, next year we have a, a completely new uh, building for surgery. So it's a group of two hospitals, and we work in both hospitals, and we have consultations in both, and we operate in both hospitals. It depends on the availability of the, of the rooms, and sometimes uh, patients are operating in, uh, in downtown, the other on operating in Kirchberg. Kirchberg is more close to the airport. Right? It's more close to it. Okay. Is there, is there anything else you'd like to add to this? No, thank you for inviting me to talk. I, I, I hope the, 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 the patients and the, the, the people from the group are um, understanding my, my bad English. So I, I, uh, so I am better writing English than speaking English. So uh, anyway, uh, I, if there are, they have questions, if they have some, uh, some information about uh, the surgery, uh, I'm pleased to... To, to respond and uh, to answer the and it, for me it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's not only trying or uh, operating patients more and more patients um, for me it's very interesting to uh, like you said before to to, to have the, this whole experience you, you have uh, you have uh, you have about the, the, the issues and the, the, the about the problems of the this process it's amazing because we have uh, very uh, about you see me 500 uh, members now uh, and uh, we have a lot of histories of uh, problems with process and that help us to to advance and to, to, to and to uh, to improve our, and to, to to learn and to share experience and that's very very interesting it's uh, it's better that that the, even the experience you had, you have with all this this uh, this group uh, that we had in the in the congress we, uh, last year in in, the, in Le Mans, the, you, we have little series of complications of so our complications. When we when we share all the, these complications, we can learn a, a lot. And that's very interesting. Fantastic. So, say a patient wants to reach out to you. What's the best way to get in contact with you? Is the mail. The mail, uh, I think it's, uh, it's better. We have also all, all the time the jet lag, and so we have to, the response is not uh, immediate, and I have, I have a lot of, uh, of work, but uh, the mail is uh, more easy. After, if we want to talk, it's more complicated, but we can arrange a Skype uh, uh, conversation and uh, to talk uh, more. Uh, more in what, detail. What is the email you would like them to contact you? So uh, 
my, my, my email, you, you, I have two emails, but maybe it's more, more easy to, it's Ricard, R-I-C-R-T-O, Ricardo, uh, with um, on pt.lu. Uh, so uh, that's sort of a more easy way to, to uh, contact me. And, and one thing you mentioned is, uh, you know, give you some time to respond. And, and would you ask for a week, two weeks? What's, what's your usually turnaround time? Because, you know, people always get impatient, and especially when they're in pain and they don't understand that you have a life as well. And that's one thing I would say. It's less than one week. Uh, most of the time I can, I can answer in uh, three days or three or four days. Okay. That, I always just like to set expectations for, for patients because – Sometimes they're anxious and they, you know, they see this video and they go, man, this Dr. Ricard, he's, he's fabulous. I want to hear his, what he's got to say about me. And, and, and that's all we're, we're just trying to do is, you know, pump the brakes a little bit because, pe you know, people want answers immediately and we're just trying to, you know, do them. And as I said, we've got patients all over international. I mean, I think we've got more Europeans that joined us this last weekend, which is quite phenomenal. Um, but, you know, we've got people from Britain and, you know, Britain seems like they've kind of stepped backwards from artificial disc replacement or total disc replacement. They, they really have. And, and some of these other countries are kind of stepping backwards and, and everybody's fusing. And then we even had a guy in Vietnam. Uh, he just joined and he had a two level fusion and he's 30 years old. And I mean, his spine looked like it was, it was almost perfect. And I, I you know, and he had, he had a 360 done and mm -hmm. I, I was kind of like, boy, he just kind of. Wrote, wrote yourself a, a life there, but I really appreciate you taking this time on a Sunday evening at your time. Everybody wants to know it's, it's 1030. It's pretty late in Luxembourg, not, not as late in Houston. And uh, once again, it was a pleasure. Like I said, if everybody wants to reach out to Dr. Ricard, he's available. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Thank you.